Hi all, I have quite an interesting over the board game to show you from last night. Barnet Elizabethans were playing against the mighty Wanstead One. I was playing against David Spearman who I've played before. I was lucky to have the white pieces in this game. If you want to join a club in North London, Barnet is a great club. Uh, check out barnetchessclub.com and contact me via Facebook. I'm King's Crusher on Facebook if you're interested in coming along on Wednesdays, by the way. So E4. I played E4. David Spearman played the Scandinavian, or it used to be called the center counter. So I took here, critical test, knight C3, and the queen went all the way back. There's also, of course, the queen A5 variation, which is more popular, I believe. So queen goes all the way back in this game. D4, knight F6, bishop C4. Uh, the main move is actually knight F3, allowing this knight to be pinned. Uh, for example, this position is possible because one is hitting b7 there, so it doesn't matter about d4. And if c6, this is quite pleasant for white for it to be a small edge. So anyway, I played this, which is also a popular move. Maybe people that don't like their knights to be pinned. So c6, knight f3. And now if the knight is pinned, it's a bit of a disaster. This didn't happen, but can you see what white plays if I give you five seconds? Okay, strongest move is knight e5. It's, maybe it's like a well-known trap in a way. Bishop takes, bishop takes f7, is checkmate. And if black has to go to e6, then this is just horrendous for black already. Big advantage for white. So we see bishop f5. I play knight e5 anyway. e6 and the hyper-aggressive g4. Now bishop e4 was played in this game, giving up the light square bishop. And I have fond memories of our previous encounter where I had some something going on in the light square, so I was happy to uh, take this bishop. On bishop g6, it seems the main line is h4, and after bishop b4 to play f3 with a big threat sometimes of h5. And if knight d5, then bishop takes, c takes, h5, f6. This is thought to be quite nice for white, this variation. Uh, white has a big advantage here technically so that's an interesting line with bishop g6 right it's, it's worth knowing this and this is a key move if you go h5 immediately then bishop e4 this position is only th this might be okay here but black is not forced into this when white plays h6 in this position black can play g6 and there shouldn't be any problem here. Bishop e2, white only has a small edge. So that's not really a, a critical test. So f3 is really the main move, it seems here, not to play h5 for those interested in playing this line. So anyway, bishop e4 was played. Now I took off here. And here I'm starting to think I don't see backward knight moves. I played quite a committal move, queen f3 which does look at f7 and hit the knight. And, and, and it looks as though that might be a little bit awkward to have to play knight d6 as played. But is the queen actually ideal on f3? Uh, there is another alternative, queen e2. And you might think, well, hold on, queen takes d4. Can you see what white plays here in this case? Okay, just this is possible. Knight f3, just backward knight move, hit the queen, and that's winning material. Uh, after the check, just king f1, and this knight's being picked up. And this is actually much stronger in a way than queen f3. If black plays knight d6, this you can see that the queen's not such a target to queen f6, for example. Uh, if we just run this through, uh, this is just very nice and pleasant for white. This should be very pleasant indeed. In fact, there's attacking prospects, threatening uh, checkmate. And yeah, this this kind of thing is great, great fun. So queen e2 is actually stronger, it seems, than queen f3. In the game, so queen f3, knight d6. I drop back the bishop, knight d7. And bishop d2, I play bishop d2. There's also bishop f4, this is worth considering. For example, like this, there's knight takes f7, very tactical line where it, it looks as though like this bishop was a target but the black king is getting mashed 
here this is a big advantage for white so bishop d2 anyway i played uh, bishop e7 there's also knight takes e5 here this position uh, with casting queenside is fun and it should be uh, this should be a nice advantage for white and uh, for example like this again the black king's getting attacked now if we look at this line again and on h4 let's try uh, bishop takes then bishop e3 hitting the queen and then actually the queen can be trapped with g5 here with the idea of rook h1 <laughs> there's uh, yeah there's amazing tactics behind the scenes so anyway bishop e7 i castle queenside it turns out h4 might be more accurate here this is also interesting after bishop takes the nifty idea of queen e3 to stop the bishops being traded off uh, so for example here then it's good as a gambit this position uh, for example this is just a very strong initiative if black ever castles kingside there's a welcoming committee on h7 already so h4 might have been the strongest move to stop the bishops coming off uh let's just check that again so h4 bishop takes queen e3 if h6 here there's knight takes f7 and then bang queen takes e6 check and rook takes h4 big advantage for white so anyway i castles and yeah the bishops coming off and it kind of relieves some of the blacks problems black hasn't got a problem bishop and he's getting rid of my bishop pair it's kind of annoying uh if he just castled then h4 is good that's going to be winning a piece for example uh if queen c7 here c4 this position should be uh okay for white because of e6 crumbling that should be a big advantage for white so anyway this is annoying it's simplifying the position and i'm not sure i wasn't really sure i was getting a bit uncertain if i have an advantage here so rookie one castles knight d3 this is a bit of a epoxy retreat move uh, i thought he's tempting me for knight takes c6 but I, I just didn't see it working i did see the possibility of exploiting the pin pawn but i did also see okay this threatens checkmate uh in two places but can you see what black plays simply if i'll give you five seconds okay black just plays knight b6 and defending everything and that's just big advantage for, for black uh so that defends a8 with the knight so i ended up playing this poxy move uh knight d3 because maybe yeah but in it's it seems c4 might be playable for example here uh this although only white's got a small edge only uh on knight takes e5 uh this position is not as strong as that and white's getting a big advantage uh so um so anyway knight d3 a bit of a poxy move uh queen f6 yes and it just seems as though i've got an issue with d4 now and i go about this in a silly way actually uh i play retreat, another retreat move queen d1 in fact there is a loose piece in black's position which is a good excuse not to have to defend the pawn just fundamentally uh that's a very good pointer at least to sort of think do i need to can be concerned about the pawn there is this loose piece in the position it turns out here that queen g3 simply striking at the loose piece not worrying about queen takes d4 because then there's can you see c3 and the queen can't really protect the knight there this knight's taking out c5 and well e5 is already taken out but the, the knight's just dropping off so actually queen g3 was possible so again it seems i've played another kind of poxy retreat move here uh if we look at this position with queen g3 uh, just for a moment again if knight f8 then again white gets a pleasant position a big advantage actually here so yeah this these are a few suboptimal moves creeping in and i i also realized i thought rather imagined that black might be thinking about taking on d4 if black takes on d4 i had actually miscalculated here knight e5 i thought that was the key response well this is in his time maybe i would have found something else 
but I was looking at this hitting the queen and here I was thinking if I take this then he's got this uh, for example so you know but there is no, and I did see knight take c6 that's only good for equality though that's even position but um, this is all irrelevant though but just just to take it a bit further there's also the engines come up with knight takes f7 this is definitely something I'm not going to see with loads of pressure on d7 are uh, being exploited and that should be even though but the thing is can you see in this scenario a much stronger move <laughs> which I've got to mention I might be having a blind spot to earlier uh, these kind of moves uh, can you see what white does here which wins material five seconds now to be fair I didn't have this this didn't actually happen in the game so it was only bad calculations in his time but it is a bit of a concern so anyway knight c1 then knight retreat yeah just knight retreat and then d6 will go like this so yeah with that loose piece uh, there's no there's no liability I was because I was thinking always thinking aggressively with the knight but it's a liability knight e5 is a liability because it allows queen c5 so actually knight c1 tucks it away out of safety and just creates that huge pressure on on the default just winning material so anyway uh he played he didn't take that pawn after all that anyway he played knight b5 uh c3 knight c7 i played f4 and i thought okay at least i've got this kind of grip on the c5 and e5 squares maybe i'm slightly better i wasn't convinced h6 was played maybe more energetic but actually this is a bit punishable here h5 g5 i can play bishop c2 and this should be a pleasant enough position for white a big advantage technically so he played h6 i played king a1 tucking my king away i didn't want any of these checks cropping up later uh knight b6 knight e5 and a bit of a slip up knight bd5 better is knight d7 uh for example here but even so there's there's resources here but let me show you the game continuation you can check the pin comment for all the detailed variations by the way of this game can you see what white plays here if i give you five seconds to pause the video so i was to play here i did i seem to come up with a good move in this position finally okay g5 yeah it seems quite nifty actually um so he played queen e7 on queen f5 i can nudge the queen to take on f4 and then play rook f1 and here knight takes f7 is a kind of family fork of the heavies of the heavy pieces and white's getting a big advantage there uh now hg then there's fg queen takes knight takes f7 again big advantage uh, so here uh, though in this c continuation let's just check this out with uh, <clears throat> Queen f5 here if I play rook f1 I'm also setting myself up for a fork and I did kind of notice this during the game and I, I had considered something like this but not playing knight takes but rook takes f7 so it turns out here the strongest might actually be bishop takes first then rook takes f7 for example like this uh, is probably the way to go it seems uh, with a big advantage to white that's that's very very nice uh, so yeah queen f5 this position yeah I've got to be careful not to be forked myself but um, also here uh, rook takes f7 is is good as well uh, just not the strongest it seems but good enough for a big advantage sometimes like that so yeah no, there's some other good moves there so this whole tactic is is working very nicely it seems and the point is here can you guess okay the point is g6 it's really quite interesting that there's a fork on f7 and also on g6 even so if he takes uh there's a fork here I thought what is this I haven't seen this tactic and he hasn't seen this sort of tactic before chess is such a marvelous maze of wonderful tactics you've never seen before even if you've played the game for years I've actually never played this kind of tactical idea before uh, so like this 
I mean, it's also logical for pawn structure. You, the basic uh, pawn structure here implies an undermining here of f7 would be good. It's a it's a target the e6 on a, on a semi open file, so it's one of the mine that is strategically uh, sensitive as well. Uh, so also, it seems bishop takes d5 is even possible. I ruled this out because I thought, hang on, then the, the rooks are not getting forked. But this is an engine line with c4 now being strong and now g6 yeah just nudging the rook um so yeah these these lines i guess the rook doesn't really want to go to a5 it's so these lines are all pretty favorable uh here so anyway g6 immediately rook d e8 uh on rook d here i i take anyway knight takes f7 um i mean it's 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 pleasant enough but uh, this was played knight takes here and actually after f5 uh yeah it's like black's crumbling a bit he actually gave up the exchange david gave up the exchange i took on e6 and i thought yeah lovely jubbly exchange up and also i can liberate my pawn now i play c4 liberating this pawn apparently the engines really like this c4 and to get the pawn there now I missed a key move here actually can you see there's a really clinical move which would probably speed it up the game uh, termination um, can you see white to play here and I miss this okay uh, the, there's actually two loose targets here I hope you can see how they can be attacked Queen not f3 as I played but actually Queen g1 here hits both targets and yeah so what does black do say so this yeah this is just horrible for black uh if g5 uh sorry queen g1 uh so if d5 yeah i just take on a7 whatever happens yeah if yeah to d defend g7 so anyway i played queen f3 it's still good i haven't lost my advantage a3 knight b5 i'm the exchange up king a2 king b8 queen f5 and i want to sort of unblockade I remember uh, some very strong players like Gary Quillen was telling me the fun of blockades is you can unblockade them. So I was thinking a bit like that. How do I unblockade the D pawn? And now here, one step f more for the D pawn. Now I'm unblockading with Queen F7. Okay, I'm a bit worried about my pawn being snapped up. A4, Knight A7. I carefully check out these possibilities and I think Rook G2 here. Simply Rook G2 teasing this pawn. Knight e8, d7, knight e7, bishop keeps hold of that pawn, g5, and there's rook f2, knight c6, check, king e7. I play to win the h6 pawn, but there's a stronger move. This is also very strong to win the h6 pawn, and it actually was enough to cause a resignation. But as pointed out by Roy Royce after the game, there's a there's an even stronger move actually. Can you see white play? Yeah, white can actually just win a piece with rook c8. For example, here the point is to drive the knight away from e8, and so the check here, and then the pawn is finally fully liberated to queen and win material. So anyway, rook h8 was sufficient, and he was very short on time at this point. So I was very happy with this game. Uh, the team won. So yeah, mighty clash, Barnet versus Barnet is beaten versus Wanstead. As I say, if you if you want to join a club in North London, yeah, check out barnetchessclub.com or Muswell Hill Chess Muswell Hill .com. Um Either I play for both. Uh, so if you enjoyed this game video and analysis, got something out of it, please click on the top left box, which should appear shortly, to become a member at chessmold.net. You can play against other YouTubers, or you can check out the analysis of this game in in great detail from the Improve menu. Learn from the Masters YouTube order. Okay, and the analysis is sometimes updated from time to time. Comments, questions, donations, see the description box. Like, share, subscribe with notification bell. All really appreciated. Thanks very much.